Hello, it's Michael Grant with Applied CAX, and today I want to go over an alternate toolpath for Contour Profile. Contour Profile is uh, a great toolpath for swarf cutting walls uh, using your 5 axis machine to cut normal to the wall and be able to uh, decrease your machining times by 10x or greater. Uh, there are situations where contour profile just doesn't work. Um, you can see here, um, if I had increased the steps here, you'd see more of this where it just won't uh, cut the wall. Um, there's just most of the 95, 98% of the time I use it um, without issue, but wanted to be able to show an alt alternate for when you uh, just can't get it to work. So one uh, possibility is streamline. Um, but a uh, great toolpath is also the uh, contour surface area. All right, so I'm going to switch this from boundary to uh, surface area. And I'm going to pick my walls under the uh, specified drive geometry. You can also do this toolpath uh, where just the surfaces you're cutting are the part, and that allows you some even extra, uh, well, flexibility to extend your surface up and start your uh, toolpath, a clean toolpath up above the part, but today I'm just going to show uh, using the actual 3D solid and the surface area to cut. So uh, if you'll notice with the uh, surface area you don't get um, just an, a value for step down, it's numbers, um, numbers or scallop. Now if um, you want to uh, control it by an, uh, an, a value you can enter that into your vertical limit. Uh, horizontal limit will just give you more points um, for uh, your arcs in the, hor in, in the horizontal uh, movement, so perpendicular to the walls. So I've picked my cut direction. I'm going to make sure my, uh, looks like my cut, I need to flip the direction of cut material so that this area uh, arrow is pointing in. All right, so I'm going to do uh, towards drive for a cavity, and then swarf drive, grid or trim. I'm going to specify the swarf direction and pick the vertical arrow that's normal to the wall. And I'm going to go ahead and generate. So as you can see, uh, you know, it's a good uh, looking toolpath. Um, I do have some extra cutting at the bottom on the floor. All right. Um, And then um, I'll go ahead and turn on smoothing to give us a little bit better options. A little bit more uh, smoothness as far as into uh, the wall. And then I'll pick the, the walls as the cut area. And 
and we have a you know pretty good uh, toolpath on our walls. Um, we would just need to uh, limit. Um, we'll go ahead and do a cleanup on the bottom. So um, one way you can limit that is uh, a trim by trimming um, your toolpath, and so you could just come back and do a final cut at the bottom normal to the wall. So if I want to trim that, I'll go ahead and drop this down. And it looks like that is not the direction, so it should be uh, here. Yeah, so that's the top. You can see the top drop down. So it should be this one here. And you'll see the top or the bottom came up a little bit. And so that uh, limited having that extra toolpath at the bottom. So there we go, um, pretty clean toolpath. It does already start to do a pretty good job of starting above. If you look at it from the top, um, you know it's a very smooth toolpath. If you look at it from the front, you can see there's a little bit of a. That's the transition for the helix. It's um, but it's again it's smooth as far as uh, if you're looking at it vertically. There's no bumps into the part. So there you go. There's a well. There's an alternate to your. Um, contour profile and then I'll just kind of show you uh, the cutter moving along the wall there so if I uh, go down here you can see the cutter is normal to the wall and then we have a <clears throat> this is a relieved shank cutter here and um, so I hope you found that helpful. Um, again, some of the, for smoothing, some of the tricks I did is to override the percentage and enter a value um, and then uh, increase the part safe distance. Hope you found this helpful and uh, please reach out to us if you have any further questions. Thanks.